Hi everybody, uh, this is an introduction video to the American horror writer Richard Lehman because I'm planning to do a series of videos where I'll be reviewing all 35 of his novels. In my opinion, he's quite an underrepresented writer, or at least on YouTube. I don't really see people talking about him a lot, but he was a major figure in horror fiction in the 80s and 90s, at least in the UK and Australia. So he's a very important writer to me, and I would just like to, you know, bring him to people's attention if possible. So while I'm giving this introduction, I'm going to be showing all the books that he wrote. I'll be showing them in the order that they were published. And like I said, I'm going to be doing a video on every one of these books, reviewing them. So let me begin then. So, yeah, <clears throat> Richard Lehman was my favorite author when I was a teenager. But until fairly recently, I, that means a few months back when the coronavirus lockdown started, I hadn't picked up one of his books in almost 20 years. So I decided to spend this summer revisiting them. This, uh, you know, coronavirus lockdown is a good, not reason, but a good opportunity to to revisit them all. So <clears throat> that's what I'm doing. So let me just say a few words then about Richard Lehman. Uh, he was very much a writer of his time. And although he was one of the biggest names in the genre in the 80s and the 90s, again, at least in the UK and Australia, he was never really that successful in other parts of the world, especially America. Um, he published his first novel in 1980, The Cellar, that I just showed, and he died in 2001. He was a young man when he died. He was only 54 years old. So that means he had a writing career of just over 20 years, but he left behind a pretty huge body of work. Uh, 35 novels, two collections of short stories, a bunch of other books he wrote under pseudonyms, I'm not going to be reviewing the pseudonymous books because they're pretty terrible, to be honest. I'm only going to be reviewing the ones he published under his own name. As for what kind of writer he was, well, on a technical level, I suppose you could say that he was maybe even a, a poor writer, uh, certainly a juvenile one, insofar as he placed very little importance on things like building an atmosphere or a sense of place. His characters are always wafer-thin stereotypes with zero development. In fact, the more you read Richard Lehman's novels, it becomes quite fun to play spot the Lehmanism. Uh, common Lehmanisms include characters who fall instantly in love with each other, male characters who are absolutely obsessed with sex. In particular, catching a glimpse of a woman's breasts it doesn't matter whether the character is 12 or 60. It applies to all of them. In layman's world, men cannot be around an attractive woman for more than 10 seconds without instantly becoming aroused and having an obsessive need to see her breasts. Like, that's what I mean when I say it's, it's very juvenile writing, sometimes. Uh, another fun laymanism is his constant use of the word rump to describe a woman's rear end. Uh, throughout this series, I'll be doing a rump watch where I'll note which page the first use of the word appears on. Another laymanism is the archetypal Richard Lehman villain, which is usually a young male who is completely psychopathic and sadistic, but there's rarely a reason given for why he's like this. There's never any real motivation for why Lehman's characters behave the way they do. Uh, one of the less savoury features of a Richard Lehman novel is the presence of rape scenes. Pretty much every novel contains at least one scene of rape, and sometimes this involves the abuse of children. And I'm not really sure how to properly phrase this, but because he's such a, a poor writer in terms of characterization, the scenes very rarely convey any of the true horror of sexual violence. Lehman rarely bothers to deal with the emotional or psychological consequences of this type of violence. The victims of it, they usually recover almost immediately. It affects them as trivially, trivially as if they'd been Q-jumped in a supermarket, you know, something... It, it has all of the, the voyeurism of sexual violence, but without any of the true weight of it, the horror of it, you know. And that's something that you will just, 
you'll have to get used to it. Again, it's not it's not one of the features of his writing that I like, um, but it he's a splatter punk writer, you know, 1980s. He, he pushed the envelope in so many ways. There is nothing he wouldn't describe this guy. Uh, well, so <clears throat> wafer-thin walking cliches for characters, next to no atmosphere, page after page of mindless, bloody sexual violence. But... You know, like I said at the start, he was one of the most important writers to me when I was a teenager. He was one of my favorite, no, not one of, he was my very favorite writer when I was a young man. And revisiting them now, 20 years later, it's been fascinating to uh, to read them as an adult and not as one of the layman horny teenagers. Uh, so why was he one of my favorite writers? If if I've just said that he wasn't a very technically gifted writer and very simplistic writer, why? What's good about him? Well, I compare Richard Lehman novels to the Friday the Thirteenth film series. If you've uh, if you've seen those, you'll know that it doesn't really matter if you're watching Friday the Thirteenth Part Two, Three, Four, Five, Six, and they're all basically the same thing. By the way, this book here, Endless Night, has so much of that mindless violence that I was talking about. Um, <clears throat> yeah, layman books are the, the equivalent of 80s slasher films. They place absolutely no strain on the intellect whatsoever. They're just a good time. They really are, despite all that stuff I just said about the, the rape stuff. Um, the plots are fun. The... He's uh, well. He is a very plot-driven writer because again, he doesn't care at all about atmosphere and characterization. It's all about the story, and that's fine. There's a place for that, you know. If I want in-depth characterization in horror novels, I've got Stephen King for that, and and various other writers. Um, this uh, you don't go to layman to think. Let me put it that way. Yeah, he. Um, I'm almost coming to the end of the books that were published while he was alive. Uh, the, the books continued to come after his death. Uh, he did leave behind a lot when he died. He was incredibly prolific. I mean, in 1995, he published two of his longest novels. Uh, I think I just showed them, Island and Quake. Uh, there were several years where he was publishing more than one book a year, as well as a bunch of short stories and what have you. So, what else to say about Richard Lehman? Um, it is not surprising to me that he's not better known because his writing has really, his type of writing has just fallen out of favor in the last, I would say, 20 years. He's very, very, very non PC. Um, his, his books are frequently sexist, chauvinistic at least. Um, and like I said, the some of the violence that he describes wouldn't really fly today. This, by the way, is another one which has um, a lot of nastiness going on in it. The Traveling Vampire Show was the last book to be published before his death. After that, in two thousand, what he died in February two thousand one. In that same year came uh, this one, Night in the Lonesome October. You notice that uh, the publishers they started to move away from the from the black uh, design, <clears throat> which I loved the black designs. I wish they hadn't done that. Yeah, so that one's uh, after he died, and then we also got also in the same year, two thousand one, No Sanctuary. Um, two thousand two came Amara, and two thousand and four came The Lake. And the final novel to be published after his death, The Glory Bus. Um, and then there was also this novella, the fourth book in the Beast House series, which was published in 2007. So those are all of his books. And I am going to be doing one video per book. And at the end of all of this series, I'll be ranking them, I think, from uh, 35, from least favorite to favorite, number 35 to number one. The aim, like I said, of these videos is to try to promote him a little bit. I do think he's very underrepresented. So hopefully you'll stick around for some of the videos, if not all of them. And I'll talk to you soon with the first video.